Hey guys, welcome back to Planet J. Judah, and I'm going to give you a trigger warning. This one is going to be very personal. Um, I don't normally do videos like this, although I have done some videos like this. Uh, but as you can tell by the title, I am reacting to Linkin Park from the past couple of weeks. I am, I'm going to get emotional, so I'm going to try to make this short, <laughs> um, but I am a really big Linkin Park fan. I have loved Linkin Park since Hybrid Theory. I didn't know who they were when they were called Zero. I've only known them as Linkin Park, um, and I've loved them since hybrid theory, which came out in 1999-2000. And, uh, first, let me give you a little background, a little bit of history on my end. I don't know if I've shared this on my channel before, but I am a suicide survivor. I was 12 years old. You have to remember, this is a 12-year-old mind. I we were losing, I shouldn't say losing, we sold the house that we lived in and we didn't have any place to go and I was terrified of being homeless and terrified of being a burden. So I chose to take myself out of the equation so that I would no longer be a burden and I wouldn't be homeless. Um, granted, this was at my mom's and I could have gone to my dad's, no questions would have been asked, it would have been fine, I would have had a place at my dad's. That being said, my house, the one that I lived in, I was losing. And so I ended, I tried to end my life. And when I did that, I ended up at the hospital and in the room that I was in, there was a baby. I don't even think it was a year old and I can't remember exactly why that baby was there, but it looked like it was covered in bruises or it may have had jaundice, jaundice, I don't know, but it was... I just remember it screaming and crying and here I was trying to take my life and here was this baby next to me fighting and I made a promise. I made a promise that I would never try to take my life again and as you can see I have been successful at that promise. Um, that being said, that thought doesn't just go away. That darkness doesn't just go away. And I have had thoughts, even as recent as a few months ago. but I've maintained that promise and a lot of it was thanks in part to Lincoln Park. I know that sounds probably stupid, but it's the truth. Hearing their music and hearing those words and hearing Chester's backstory and I mean I latched on to Chester I latched on to Chester because his story was so heartbreaking and I know that the others didn't have exactly the best lives either I'm sure but I gravitated to Chester Bennington and 
his music, his voice helped keep me alive. It really did. So, flash forward to 2017 and that was probably one of the hardest celebrity deaths. I know that sounds so stupid because he was just a person, but he was a voice that kept me here. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, July 20th, 2017. It was a very hard day. And it's still, as you can tell, it's still very hard. And... I have wanted so much to hear their music, their, to hear new music, to hear him, and we've gotten that over the last seven years. We've gotten a couple songs that didn't get put on an album for whatever reason, and it was so good to hear him again. To hear something new from him again. And then, fast forward to a couple weeks ago, we get this ominous lead in to a countdown, a time clock counting down. And then we get what they dubbed uh, Lincoln Park Day, which was the actual countdown and it came and went with nothing nothing no information and it was the anticipation of what it was meaning and representing and what it could have been you know was it a new singer was it new music was it was it what 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 was it and then flash forward to september 5th and the live and this new song sung by a new singer a new lead singer with a tour a world tour announced all in one day. I was so excited and so ready. And that song, The Emptiness Machine, sorry, I dropped my, that song, it felt so familiar, but so different and so hard to listen to and I know I'm probably gonna get flack but I don't really care it was also so comforting because it was it was Lincoln Park back and I was excited again because it's been seven years and I didn't think that they would ever come back. But here they were in my living room, so to speak, saying, hi, we're back. And uh, I felt elated. I felt like I could breathe as stupid as that may seem or sound or whatever it was calming and it was exciting and I was looking forward to hearing the new album coming out in November and
I can hear, I don't know if you guys can, but <laughs> I can hear an ice cream truck in the background going down my street. Okay, sorry. My mom-in-law came and was knocking at the door. But anyways, I don't remember exactly what I was saying. But um, to say I was excited and looking forward to what um, I believe it was Dave Phoenix called Lincoln Park 2.0. Would be an understatement. I immediately went to Spotify, Spotify, yeah, Spotify, and went to their channel and immediately clicked on the pre order. So I'm, I will get the new album. Um, I want the new album in a physical form, but I will definitely, I will have it uh, in digital form. And uh, I was excited. I was definitely excited. And then the backlash happened. I mean, if you don't know by now, uh, you are probably living under a rock. Well, either that or you're just not a, a Linkin Park fan. Um, with the addition of Emily Armstrong, Armstrong and uh, Colin Britton, and I am so sorry to Colin Britton because he literally got pushed by the wayside. He's either lucky or I'm sorry, because um, he literally got pushed. Everybody's forgotten. And then, oh, and then there's Alex, who's going to be um, touring, taking Brad's place, because Brad is not going to be touring. So, I mean, there's so much information that's come at us in the last literal few days. And um, all this backlash with Emily and I'm not going to go into it. You can look it up. Uh, it's everywhere. Um, I cannot fathom that Mike and Brad and Joe and Dave and would bring in someone to not take the place of Chester, but to carry on his legacy would be someone that doesn't believe in uh, mental disorders or having mental issues. Uh, I, I just, I can't. I can't and I won't. And I know that's probably just me wanting Lincoln Park so badly, but I just can't fathom that they would do something that would be so against what Chester represented to so many of us. So many people are here because of Lincoln Park and Chester Bennington. I couldn't, I can't imagine all the stories because I know they're out there because mine is there. Um, so with that, I have to believe that there is something more to their choice. They chose Emily and they chose Colin and they chose Alex to be a part of the Lincoln Park family, and I want to say welcome to the Lincoln Park family, to all of them, because it is a big family, um, and those are really, really big shoes to fill, and fast forward to last night, there was the first of six tour dates. First one in LA was last night. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't film anything or post anything yesterday because I was dealing with processing not just that, but other emotions because 
September 11th is a really big day. <laughs> Not only in my personal history, but in the world's history. So there was a lot going on yesterday. And um, I just want to say, I know that they will probably never hear this or watch this. But I just want to say thank you to Lincoln Park. I, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. I just want to say thank you to Lincoln Park. Thank you, Mike and Brad and Joe, Dave, Phoenix, and Rob. Even though, Rob, you're not there, and Brad, you're not going to be there for the tour, but you're still there behind the scenes. Um, and especially to Chester, thank you for being such a big part of my history. You have saved not just me but thousands if not millions including my son and i appreciate everything that you've done and everything that you will do in the future and emily and colin and alex i welcome you into the lincoln park family i have watched footage of the concert last night and you all did amazing it was I could feel the energy through the screen and I so wanted to be there <laughs> I wish I could have been and I look forward to seeing what you guys have next I can't wait for the new album. I'm still processing. And it's going to be a process. But I just want to say thank you. And if you ever do see this. Just know that. You guys have saved a lot of people. You really have. I'm not even sure if I'm going to post this, but I think I just needed to express how I felt. And as hard as it is, I really do love the new song. And I can't wait to hear the rest of From Zero. Sorry, my eyes. <laughs> so... Um, let me just end this with saying life is worth being around life is worth being alive and no matter how hard you think it might be you are worth being here and even though Chester isn't. His legacy lives on and will live on. So if you need any help, do not hesitate. You can even call 911. But I will post as many as I can um, helplines hotlines, whatever you want to call them, um, as I can in the description box below as well as here on the screen. Um, it is so important that you get the help that you need. And just know that you are worth having around. You are worth being alive. You will touch people in ways that you can't even understand. I know that I have saved at least one person 
from doing the same thing I did. And if I had not been success, or if I had been successful, I wouldn't be able to say that because I wouldn't have been here to do that. So if you really, if you, leave me a comment um you can find me on all the social media um leave me a message i have an email you can that's in the description box below and if you ever just need to talk i will be here and uh, yeah Thank you for listening, especially if you've made it this far. Um, yeah. Thank you.